This presentation is all about um, acidification of the oceans and covers some of the threats to ecosystem services in the oceans and the tipping points which are being experienced. The oceans are an incredibly significant store of carbon in the world. They're more important than all the land plants, than all the carbon which is in the atmosphere. And um, you can see that the oceans store 38,700 billion tonnes of carbon. And that's in both the surface oceans and then also in the deep oceans. And we know that some carbon actually settles out on the bottom of the seabed um, as dead organisms. Carbon dioxide has been steadily increasing um, since 1850, since the Industrial Revolution, but very steeply um, in the last decade, so since 2016, you can see that the black line here represents the trend line in carbon dioxide concentration in parts per million. And you can see that... Um, in uh, the decade from 2000 that it started to exceed 400 parts per million um, and uh, you can see in 2020 um, that it's tracking um, over 410 parts per million and climate scientists think that if we've exceeded 400 parts per million it's going to be extremely difficult for us to keep global warming the warming of um, the earth's systems below two degrees centigrade so the expected amount of warming um, on Earth in the atmosphere is likely to exceed 2 degrees centigrade. Remember that each year carbon dioxide emissions um, oscillate above and below that trend line. And that's because every year in the Northern Hemisphere, as the ecosystems start to photosynthesize, um, there's more uptake, and that represents where it goes below the line, there's more uptake of carbon dioxide. But then every winter, there's more release, uptake, release uptake release by the ecosystems um, which are affected strongly by the large volume of land mass which is found in the northern hemisphere. The ocean is really important in this process because industrial processes like making cement, like power generation, are releasing carbon dioxide and also as we burn primary uh, fossil fuels um, such as coal, oil and gas, these are releasing carbon into the atmosphere. The ocean plays a key role in the uptake of that increased carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is totally invisible to us, but it does dissolve in water in the upper layers of the ocean. And the amount which dissolves into the upper layers of the ocean is very substantial. It's estimated to be about 22 million tonnes per day. There's approximately 40% less um, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than expected. And this is... Um, means that there's been less atmospheric warming than was originally thought. Atmospheric scientists now estimate that there is 40% less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than expected, um, and that is being sequestered into the upper layers of the ocean. However, there is a major drawback to the sequestration of carbon dioxide in the upper layers of the atmosphere. Normally, seawater is weakly alkali, not acidic. So the normal pH of seawater in historical time and geological time has been around 8.2. However, since measurements started, there has been a trend towards increasing acidity towards the lower pH values. So currently, the pH of ocean waters is showing at, is measuring at 8.1 um, on the pH scale. However, this might look like a very small shift to the left towards this acidic end. However, this scale is logarithmic, which actually means that seawater is 30% more acidic. Let's have a look at this data record, which comes from the North Pacific. This is measured in um, the, on the island, one of the islands, a station in Hawaii. So this is measured in the middle of the Hawaiian island chain, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. This is far, far, far away from the industrial hubs, producing the carbon dioxide in industrialised nations or nations undergoing industrialisation. But you can see that it affects the whole Earth. It's measured um, in this remote area. And it's also measuring not just um, carbon dioxide on this red line, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere measured in parts per million, but on the right-hand axis we've got um, pH scale. And that is shown for the blue line, the blue line which started to be measured in the 1980s, was when um, pH of seawater started to be measured. And we can see um, an oscillating trend, but we can see, if we were to plot a trend line through that, we can see that there's declining pH towards acidity. 
At the same time, we can see that tracks in the opposite direction with the um, the uh, dissolved carbon dioxide in the uh, seawater. So that's the green line. What is it that makes the ocean acidic? Carbon dioxide dissolves with water. It forms a weak acid, H2CO3. That is called carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is not stable um, as a substance in water. And so it dissociates and is in equilibrium with the carbonate ion and the two H plus ions. It's the H plus ions, when the, the hydrogen ions, which cause acidity in the oceans. So you might be thinking, 30% more acidic, um, but surely that's not going to have a substantial impact on the ecosystems which are in the oceans. Problem is, is that many marine organisms build their skeletons, you see their shells here, the skeletons, um, made of calcium carbonate. And they build those um, from the carbonate ions which are found in seawater. They form um, tasty foods for millions of people across the world. As the ocean waters become more acidic, these organisms can't build their skeletons. And that's because the carbonate ions bind to the hydrogen ions. They form HCO3 minus ions, they form bicarbonate ions. And so there's less carbon available in the oceans for these organisms to um, then grow their skeletons. And so they stop growing, they don't grow so well, oyster beds um, start to be not as productive, or they um, start not to be able to reproduce, and so there's huge changes to our marine organisms. This also affects not just um, mollusks, like those ones we just saw with shells and gastropods, but it also affects the microorganisms, the phytoplankton, which are found in the upper layers of the ocean, that swim freely in the upper oceans. Billions and billions of them fix carbon into their skeletons, but they're disappearing. And this means that the biological pump from atmosphere to biomass, biomass to ocean sediments, may also be dis um, um, under threat. And it could reduce this negative feedback mechanism whereby the ocean is currently absorbing 40%, um, there's 40% less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than expected. But that negative feedback of reducing atmospheric carbon and reducing the enhanced greenhouse effect may weaken um, because there's less carbon available for um, fixing of carbon in the oceans due to the acidity. It's also true that increasing acidity affects existing shells, not just the formation of shells, but um, the acidity can actually react with the shells and cause them to dissolve. This is a microorganism called Pteropoda, um, and after only one and a half months, after 45 days, you can see the shell has become translucent. Um, the car calcium carbonate of the shell has dissolved in the oceans, um, and uh, that happened when the pH was 7.8. This is the predicted pH of the oceans by 2100. Um, maybe in your lifetime. So even if the amount of weathering on the land stays the same, the biological carbon pump could transfer less um, carbon, um, less than the current 10 gigatons of carbon from the atmosphere to the deep ocean each year. If the growth of these phytoplankton changes, the amount of carbon sequestered is also going to change. So just to remind you, we've got weathering of an erosion of carbon rocks that flows into the oceans, which gives it its current pH, alkali pH, We've got phytoplankton in the biological pump that are created in the upper layers of the ocean and multiply in big blooms and then they die and other organisms die and they build up on the seafloor and they, they represent what's called the biological pump part, part of the fast carbon cycle. Um, and then obviously this part is then into the slow carbon cycle. Coral reefs are complicated ecosystems and a lot of study has been done on these coral reefs. The coral reef skeleton, which you can see here, is built from calcium carbonate. There's significant concern as the ocean warms and acidity increases that the algae, which provide the food for the coral through photosynthesis, are expelled. When they're expelled, only the skeleton is left. And this um, is referred to as a coral bleaching event because the coral no longer looks vibrantly coloured. Instead, it becomes white and dead, leads to coral death. Let's think about one particular place. Um, this uh, structure here, visible from space, is the Great Barrier Reef off the east coast of Australia. In the last few years, 2017 and 2016, it's experienced two significant bleaching events. This led, has led to the loss of ecosystem diversity. Um, it's also contributed to problems with global as a global tourist attraction. It's led to um, a loss of fish from the ecosystem. 
Um, and um, you can see that the area affected was different. So in 2016, it was further north. In 2017, that area was affected, but the most severe area had, had moved further south. These ecosystems are extremely complicated and they're affected not just by the increasing acidity of the oceans and lowering of the pH towards um, Severn, but they're also affected by the warming of the oceans. Um, and um, it's thought that that's had a very dramatic effect as well as the increasing acidity. So a quick review um, of this part of the Edexcel A-level specification in geography. Maybe you could press pause now and see if you can remember some of the key facts from this presentation.